Hey up Sofa Squad and welcome to this third instalment of Locusts Will Eat Your Money. And this time I'm going to take a close look at a passage in the Bible that many preachers take out of context in order to justify the doctrine of tithing. This passage is, of course, Malachi chapter 3, verses 8 to 11. So let's take a look at it, shall we? Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how are we robbing you? In tithes and offerings. You are under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Malachi chapter 3 verses 8 to 11. This passage in the Old Testament is the one that is quoted by preachers the most often to validate the doctrine of tithing. But it is always taken out of context and is used wrongly to accuse born-again Christians of stealing from God if they withhold their tithe from him. It is also used erroneously to threaten Christians with a curse if they withhold their tithes. The end result is that Christians give 10% of their income religiously every month out of obligation and fear rather than giving cheerfully out of love and faith and they end up being robbed themselves of the freedom that Christ died for them to have. A brief exegesis of this passage is therefore necessary in order to put this passage in its proper context and clear up any misunderstanding of this passage. Oh, a, a complete exegesis! <laughs> you guys are in for a treat! <laughs> I used to love uh, writing exegesis uh, of Bible passages. It's what I used to love doing the best. <laughs> so, let's dive right in, shall we? Verse 8. God begins by asking the people the rhetorical question, Will anyone rob God? Who would dare to steal from God? Surely the children of Israel couldn't be stealing from God. But that is exactly what they were doing. And they were robbing him by withholding their tithes and offerings. The Israelites were indeed robbing God. But they were robbing God by withholding their tithes because tithing was an obligation of the law and they were still under the law. But as Christians, we are no longer under the law. We are under the new covenant of grace. We are no longer obligated to pay tithes to God, so we are not robbing him by withholding them. How can we be withholding something that we don't have to pay in the first place? 
How can we therefore be robbing God? In the new covenant, all things have been freely given to us in Christ. Verse 9. God tells them through Malachi that because the whole nation has been withholding their tithes, they are all under a curse. As I have already stated above, under the old covenant, the Jews had to keep all the commandments given to them through Moses and included the rules and regulations concerning tithing and if they broke any one of these rules that Moses gave them, God promised to curse them. The Jews had broken their side of the old covenant by withholding their tithes, so it followed that they were under the curse. It is wrong, however, to apply this verse to Christians who are under the new covenant as the law no longer applies to them, and so therefore neither does the curse. In his letter to the Galatians, Paul writes, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one who hangs on a tree. In order that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Galatians chapter 3 verses 13 and 14 Christ set us free from the curse of the law when he shed his blood on the cross. It is therefore quite wrong to apply the curse to Christians. Verse 10 God challenges the Jews to put him to the test by bringing all their tithes into the storehouse. The promise is that if they begin tithing again, he will open the windows of heaven for them and pour down an overflow of blessing. Again, Malachi was prophesying to Jews who were under the law. Just as surely as they were under the curse for breaking the law, it would follow that they would once again come under the blessings for keeping the law by tithing again. As I have stated above, opening the windows of heaven was one of the blessings for keeping the law. Christians are no longer under the law and what we have in Christ is far superior to what the Jews had under the law. We no longer have to earn God's blessings by tithing for all things are ours in Christ and all the blessings of Abraham are ours in Christ. Verse 11 God goes on to promise the Jews, that if they go back to tithing, he will rebuke the locusts and stop them from devouring their crops. It has been taught that if Christians withhold their tithes from God, he will send locusts to eat their money, and some misfortune would happen to them. For example, their computer will crash, or their car will break down, and God will get his tithe that way. This kind of preaching is not only an abuse of scripture, it is an abuse of Christians. It is theologically wrong and morally wrong to preach this way. When people preach this way, the result is that Christians will tithe out of fear and not out of faith. As I have already stated above, locusts eating their crops was one of the curses that the Israelites came under for not keeping the law. But it is wrong to apply this curse to Christians who have been set free from the law 
and from the curse by Christ when he shed his blood on the cross. To preach that God will send locusts to eat people's money if they withhold their tithes is to rob them of the freedom that Christ died for them to have. You can see from this portion of the book that I really wanted to hammer my point home that Christians were no longer under the law of Moses but were under grace and (laughs) were no longer obligated to tithe, were no longer obligated to pay 10% of their income and no longer had to give financially out of fear of locusts eating their money. Well, I hope you've liked this video. Um, Join me next time when I will start looking at tithing after the law. If you've liked this video, do give me a thumbs up. And if you're new, then do subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you never miss another video. Okay, bye for now.